P-O-D, or pod, as I call them. Mm -hmm. I don't. No. XFM 104.9, it's the Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah. So Dermot O'Diddley. Yes. Three weeks and weeks, weeks and weeks in a row, he doesn't even turn up, and now suddenly he's all over breakfast. I noticed, yeah, he's standing in for the breakfast show. Why weren't we asked to do that? Well, That's we what were. I'm saying. Were we? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah, but I don't want to get up that early, do I? Sure, sure. So, uh, I feel a bit hungover today, actually. Do you? Yeah. What's happening? What, what, were you partying last night, were you? Well, not partying, we just went out, went out for a couple of drinks, then had a meal, and then went to the borderline, and saw about, I'll tell you about that, it's good. You saw a band? That's the first yeah. time in years, isn't it? It, it is, yeah. Like yeah, because, uh, no, so, uh, you know John Sim, the actor? Mm, not really. He's in this band, right, called Magic, Magic Alex, and it was really good, they're sort of like, sort of like a friendly oasis, they got, you know, sort of yeah, quite, yeah. M you know, it's quite mank sort of feel, but it's really good, good songs and everything. Is nice. he the singer? Yeah, no, he's a guitarist, nice call. Yeah. But, it was full of actors, because it, because it, right? and I felt quite tall. That's ludicrous, because you're See, a very short man. Well, I am. I'm sort of, um, I was average, but now I'm not, I don't think, mm. five or eight, that's right. But there, I was like quite, it was like Lilliput. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just got to hang out at actors <laughs> do. So, all right, I'm like, yeah. This is the reason, because act actors are often very, quite handsome people, but yet they're always quite yeah, obnoxious. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are. No, I mean, they're normally quite obnoxious, Rick. Again, you know, you're a good example of that. Mm -hmm. And yet, yet, I think it must be the small man complex. That's what makes them so obnoxious and so kind of desperate for attention. Didn't right. realise it before. Steady on. Because of course, I tower above everyone. You do, don't you? I'm, uh, for people who don't know who are listening, I'm six foot seven inches tall. That's, 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 that's high. Yeah. That's and, big. and, and, um, for people who've never seen him, he doesn't hold it well. It's not like he's a sort of handsome athlete, is it, Carl? He's a bit of a, what, what do you call him? A t Carl, don't answer. No, 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 no. Don't get drawn into that. No, no, you, know, no, you know the game he's playing. No, 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 no. Do you know, yesterday when you were in the office, yeah. you did a little move, <laughs> and it reminded me of Blakey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought oh, I hate you, Gervais. Oh, I hate you, Pilkington. That sort of stance. Yeah, but even he was, he held it a little bit better, didn't he? Because he was a man, you know, he yeah. had a big coat and everything, a peak cap. But, uh, yeah. I can't believe you. Like, I've not suffered enough from being freakishly tall. Now, two of my best buddies, yeah. live on radio, are just... It's not know. just the height, though, is it? It's the... Posture in the face and everything. But it's got your places, hasn't oh. it? <laughs> no. What do you mean it's got your places? I think I think people give you a bit more of a chance in, in your career and stuff. It's like... Oh. What? Yeah, stacking shelves. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can reach to a high level. <laughs> Muse. Plug in, baby, on XFM 104.9. Rick, Ricky Gervais, go on. Well, yeah, but I know you guys are laughing about the height thing, and uh, for those that have only just tuned in, I am six foot seven inches tall, which is which is tall, and that's big. And I, you know, I pride myself on it in a way. You know, I've worked hard, I've not smoked, I <laughs> ate well. You know, yeah. it's an accomplishment. But obviously, I didn't have much involvement in it. I just am, and it's a curse because mainly the problem is that you you can't get stuff, you can't get clothes, you can't get shoes. You know? Yeah, size so so 14 feet. Yeah, that's it, but it is genuine, and I don't know, I mean it costs a lot to buy a pair of size 14 shoes, and it, so I don't, I mean if you're poor, if you were genuinely poor, I don't know how you'd afford to be tall, because mm. the clothing costs more, everything costs I've, more. I've seen this in comics, that you'd, you'd actually go to school in a barrel. Wearing a barrel. With right. just braces, it'd yeah. just be a barrel, like, and you'd have sort of flip-flops, uh, <laughs> and you'd um, take a mule yeah. with you. They all had a mule, didn't they, the but poor people? people always think like, it, that they, like you'll be in a pub or something, and people, I mean, people just think they can talk to you about it. They just think, oh, you're, you're, you're lanky, uh. it's just like, because it's like they But think, that really annoys you, doesn't it? Well, it annoys me because it's like they think I should be proud of it. Like well, exactly, but that they don't think that this, that this is not a disadvantage, this is not a disability, is it? You're, you're taller than most people. It yeah, might it get a disability. No, 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 if you were, if you were eight, Eight foot three would be slightly disabilitating. You would, you know, but disabilitating. You, you're, you're, what? Disabilitating? <laughs> yeah. No, you're a medical man, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> but no, the point is, it's a disabilitating because <laughs> you go on public transport. Like if you're on a coach. Uh, yeah. You, the only place I can sit on a coach is that seat on the driver's lap. Either, either on the driver's lap or that seat at the very end. Yeah. You know where, which is kind of, which sits into the aisle. Yeah. That's the only place I can. Well, sit. you st and stand, stand up, some sort of stand up at the back, waving at drivers. You could drive it from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes, watch it. Yeah. Were, were you a tall baby? Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Merchant, uh, you've given birth to a basketball player. <laughs> Look at his dribble already. Were you a tall baby? Babies aren't tall. Oh, well, what, oh, at, right. at what point did, did you suddenly, like, Jesus, nothing fits me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't happen overnight. Carl. Let's do a little graph. How tall were you at five? Oh, I don't know. Three foot. Three foot. How tall were you at twelve? Six foot. 
Six. <laughs> what are you in? I don't know, do I? How do I remember? I don't remember this. Well, when did teachers start calling you freak boy and really, lanky? They didn't. They was, it wasn't didn't they? So much. It was no. You went to a funny school. <laughs> I went bowling with him once. Well, I'd never been bowling before, and he'd been once before. And he went, "Let's go to this bowl." We went to a bowling alley, right? And um, you have to wear these special shoes. Now they're they're sort of like pointed things anyway, and they're um, multicoloured, sort of red and green. Like, they look pretty weird. And uh, and the woman said to me, "Oh, what size?" I said, "Oh, eight." She went, yeah. So what size are you? Went, fourteen. She went fourteen. He went, "You probably haven't got them." He goes, "She goes, yeah, I think we have got one pair." And she put them on the table, and it was like Krusty the Clown. And I just started laughing. They looked so long, and he had to run around this bowling alley in these freaky clown shoes. Yeah, but they don't look freaky clown like when I'm wearing them, because the rest of me is in proportion to it. It looks like a little wall bracket. Doing the worst thing. One of the worst things that happened to me was when I was like, I don't know, when I was about sixteen or something. We went to um. It's a fire uh, there's alarm a fire alarm going off. There's a fire alarm going off. And the off fire the light's going off. Yeah. Should, should, should we not just should maybe play a record it? and go and check that out? Wrap it up if you want. Oh, no, no, not wrap it up. Play a record, I'm going to go. No, the See fire has gone off, Rick. It's gone off. Oh! What if it might have burned down? Yeah, I think we'd know about it. The flames licking around our ankles would be a clue. God. I'm going to go and investigate. Oh, you so shouldn't ignore oh, a fire alarm. Why me? We're entertaining the nation. Oh, look at him. He's scared of fire. <laughs> Mercury Rev. The dark is rising. That's a good song, isn't it? I noticed that your um, investigating the fire mainly involved wandering out into the office, looking around a bit, then coming back. Yeah. What did you find out? There was no fire. There was no fire? No. Oh, right. But I love it. Imagine that though. Imagine like, that there's a fire and there's loads of firemen. They go get back and you go to the fireman. Oh, get back! Oh, look at him. I would. I would. I'd actually yeah. justify to. Okay, there's heavy shelling, lads. Retreat. Oh, Brack Sarge. I'm sorry. Brack Sarge. Yeah. Just there was a fire. Like, I'd never seen it before. A fire thing going off. There was a fire alarm. I thought, oh, let's at least have a look if there's a fire. That's all I thought. See, there's some official coming in now. To tell us we should have been running out. There's no fire. Well, you can't just stop entertaining, you know, the people of London just because there's a fire. This isn't the Titanic. <laughs> oh, true. I don't have to carry on playing. I don't I, know. It feels I, like a bit of a sinking ship. Really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, right. Nice one. Oh, nice one. I don't know who oh. I was taking off then. Probably me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, listen, let me just tell you briefly. This this is a, another example of of how people can just exploit you and make fun of you when you're tall. Yeah. Um, I was quite tall. I've always been like about six foot seven for quite a while now. And when I was about 16, um, I went to a, a big New Year's celebration in Bristol, where I come from. And they, everyone kind of congregates in this big sort of part of town, and there was all people dancing around, like in Trafalgar Square. And um, I was there, and I just, somehow I sort of, I just picked up a balloon somewhere along the line, one of those kind of helium sort of balloons, and I was holding that, sort of dancing around. And um, these two girls came up to me, and I was thinking, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, it's New Year's Eve, brilliant, you know, that's, the, uh, that's the, my kind of party. Yeah. And they came up, and they went, hey. Once a year. And they went, <laughs> they said, uh, are you going to be here for long? And I went, well, maybe. And they said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you <laughs> in about an hour. I went, what do you mean? I went, well, it's just because we can see you wherever you are. <laughs> Don't worry, you can move around and stuff. We'll see you with the balloon. Just arranged uh, to meet some friends. I love here. that. A landmark. So, like, so pilots use that. Oh, we'll just come in. Uh, there's, uh, we'll be, uh, uh, when we see Steve Merchant, we'll be descending <laughs> to Bristol Temple Mead. What's really funny is New Year's Eve, Trafalgar Square, you've got a huge column. But they use yeah. Steve as, like, the meeting point. Steve's got a huge funny. column. Brilliant, Rick. Well done. <laughs> Award-winning comedy from Ricky Gervais. Happy Monday. T took you back, didn't it? Happy Monday's there, Manxy. Now, Carl's, like, really getting down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. Got come any on. Vera's? Oh, come on, Mel. Ah. Did it take you back, did it? Yeah. How old are you? 29. So you were, oh, you were just going in, uh, out of your teens. I'm a Virgo. No. What? No. Yeah. That, that, no. You don't understand. It's just, uh, I'm Rick, a Virgo. Rick, I thought we discussed about involving Carl. <laughs> yeah, in sorry, discussion. yeah. Yeah. The management have told us we're just not allowed to do it. <laughs> We've had emails from yeah. people. Please don't so speak to Carl. It's cruel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. On the cusp. Can I just make an appeal? I don't want to On the cusp, the Virgo, he said. <laughs> Still going through with it. Doesn't know what's going on, does he? <laughs> Just wave bright objects at him. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and we've got a competition, this, Steve. We have, but before we mention that, can I just ask something? For, I don't want to exploit our position on the radio. No. But I wonder, because I'm very tall, and it's very tricky for me to get size 14 shoes and big clothes and stuff, can I just get people to send some stuff? If, if like, maybe they own a shop which Yeah, but it'd be, it'd be things like homemade clogs That's that people cool. have carved out of chunks of wood they found That's in whatever. the shed. Whatever. It's not really great. America. When I was in America, uh, everyone says to me, oh, you go to America. It is a cool. I'm out of my own skin. <laughs> Um, when I was in America, everyone told me that it would be re you know really easy to get big clothes and big shoes and that because they're all huge and all freaks over there. All right, all right, all right, steady on. And I was wandering around New York and I was going in a few shops, kind of saying you know we've got size 14, US 15 shoes, and they were going no, they, we want <laughs> is that the difference? Yeah. One. And they literally were laughing at me. There was a couple of shops where they literally laugh and get like someone else in and come and look at the tall freaky Englishman. Really? And then one guy said, oh, I remember we had someone come in here once and he said he'd been to a shop which sold kind of stuff for really tall people and and. Um, and he said, I think I can remember the address, and he sort of looked at the, the sort of telephone directory, and he made a note of it. And I went on the subway, and I went down all Lily the Lily And I, I went, cause it took me ages to get in, really hard to find it. I finally went in there, I've never seen it. It was heaving, right, with freaks. It really? It was amazing. They were, it was like, they were just kind of gargoyles. It was like something from Lord of the Rings. They were just kind of these tall people and kind of gnarled. Did they turn around and start bowing to you? It was incredible. Yeah. And I went in, and I just <laughs> said, hi, I'm looking for a kind of da 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 sort of thing. The guy went, yeah, sure. And he sort of hobbled off into the darkness and came back with exactly the kind of pair of shoes I wanted. I couldn't believe my luck. It might be a magic shop. But it was like it was like that shop in um, Mr. Ben. It might have been a dream, though, you yeah. see. <laughs> Did you, have you still actually got the shoes? No. Because when Mr. Ben sort of like goes back and wakes up next day, he finds like a feather in his pocket where he remembers he, he was a... You know, a 17th century sort of squire or something. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> ah, the classic episode of Mr. Penn when he becomes a 17th century <laughs> squire. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Mr. Ben learns to play the harpsichord. But uh, it's uh, like when Mr. Ben, that, that black shopkeeper, goes, right, are you going to pay for that? You're, yeah, not, you're not just going to go yeah. through that door and then have an adventure and come back. Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> no, you're not. You're barred. Yeah. You just make me sick. We, we wait nothing from you. <laughs> well, I'm not in this for your amusement, Mr. Ben. Is it only Ben who's got the insider knowledge about the magical doorway? Or I don't know, because that, that fella in the fez doesn't seem to have anyone else there. No, rarely. He's always grinning, though. He knows yeah. something. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a documentary, though, is it? It's a, it's, it's a kid's show, isn't it? I'm trying to remember. No, it's uh, not. It's just a kid's show, so anything sure. can happen. Yeah. That's yeah. A, a lot of people make that mistake sure. when they slag off something like Scooby Doo or oh. Thundercats. It's not not really it's not reality. Real. It's just a kid's. Well, they, Mr. Ben, they were all on drugs, weren't they? Like Magic Roundabout. My mate fancied <laughs> Cheetera from Thundercats. Which one was Cheetera? I quite like She Woman. She was she was the lovely. She's a lovely cat. Yeah, she was a real dish. What's the what's the what's the sexiest cartoon? Uh, I'm glad you've asked. Um, a lot of people say Jessica Rabbit. They do, and they'd be right to say that because she's actually human. She's not an animal, which is good. What? Isn't she? No, no, she's she's a normal woman married to a rabbit. <laughs> no, yeah, she's yeah, not. She's, yeah, Jessica Rabbit. Is that all she got a surname, Rabbit? But yeah, she's not actually. She's a rabbit. married Roger Rabbit, but she's not actually a rabbit. She's a glamorous woman. Is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, never yeah. seen it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the weird thing about it. That's weird, though, isn't it? It is weird. The idea of a rabbit having sex with a beautiful woman. That, that is the weirdest thing about it. How does that make you feel? Annoyed, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> Yeah, but I bought some bunny ears just after I saw the film. Oh, hip hop! You got your hip hop. Oh track. yeah, good. No, no, uh, um, this album was uh, rated by a lot of people last year, and uh, my sources tell <laughs> me that it's being re-released and re-recorded this yeah. year. Anyway, Nerd are the outfit. Uh, they're better known as the Neptunes, who are kind sure. of uh, sort of hip hop R and B producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think yeah, this yeah, track yeah, may yeah. have featured on a giveaway CD. It did. On the enemy. It did. Anyway, it's Dynamite. It's from the album In Search of by Nerd, and it's Bobby James. Play it. <laughs> Nerd from the album In Search Of, and that's Bobby James. It's brilliant. It's great. It's, it? it's really bit. It reminds me a little bit of um, Warren G. That that chorus. Sure. Yeah. 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 And, and apparently the album, uh, I don't. It's, it was on kind of limited release, so it's quite tricky to get hold of. But as I say, I think they're re-releasing it. Well, you should tape off the radio because we're doing yeah. lots of features. Yeah. No, I'll maybe play that again in the future. Just tape it off. I'll tell you what. I'll play the whole album over the course of the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and we're just tell. I mean, you know. We're well, growing up as talking, we just go now and you I mean, can press play and record. I mean, we can't actually say, we can't advocate you tape off the radio because that's breaking No, or maybe I'll just do some bootlegs of the, you know, the yeah. catalogue and just well, sell so yeah, them Camden Market you know, for yeah. four quid. <laughs> exactly, fine. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we won't, I mean, we, you know, we should really say that, but... Warren G is um, Dr. Dre's cousin, is he, or something? Is he, is... is Warren that G, right? I think, is his cousin, yeah. But I, I know he's got a famous brother as well, and I, found, I, I think it's something like Nate Dogg. It could well be Nate Dogg. We could maybe someone would know that and could yeah. email you, or phone you, in. Yeah, or email maybe kind of. This is the best thing about being on the um, radio. I can I can think of something. There was a competition right on Virgin, right? I was listening. Virgin, I think one oh five point. No, what is it? 
I, I can't know. remember. Yeah. Um, good station. Good, good station, yeah. good station. Um, and they had a competition, right? And it was to win a trip to America for the on the Enterprise. It was all about space. And there was one there was one question about answer three, right? And it was who was the first man into space? Yuri Gagarin. Um, who was doing that? And then the third question was um, how how much bigger than the moon is the sun? Is it twice as big or four times as big? And this one went four times as big. Went correct. It's not. It's hundreds it's of times bigger. bigger. I can't yeah. believe. Uh, can someone look that up on the internet? And how many times bigger is the sun than the moon? It's not four times. It's it's huge. It's like beach ball to a pea type dimensions. Which DJ was oh. it? Do you remember on Virgin? I can't remember, but it was the one on sort of about eleven o'clock. Oh, 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 Wouldn't want to be in there. Um, yeah, he's embarrassed himself, isn't he? Embarrassed when we do quizzes, we never get anything wrong. That's true. Enough. During that track, I'm I'm chilling out. I'm loving it, aren't yeah. I? Carl goes, do you know how baguettes came about? <laughs> do you know how baguettes come about? I went, go on, and Steve went, no, save it. Wait a minute, though, I'm thinking, Rick, people are going to be desperate to know the answer to that. Why don't we play some uh, ads and some music and stuff? It's like a cliffhanger. Exactly. How did ba baguettes come about? Whatever he says is going to be good, Stay isn't it? Stay tuned to XFM to find out. Hives. I hate to say I told you so. So I love that sort of stuff. Mm. That and the strokes. Well, it's so much better than all this new metal rubbish, isn't it? Definitely. Now, most people think we talk rubbish on air. Yep. If they could hear the conversations Off that air. go on. I know, but um, someone just emailed in saying the sun is indeed about 400 times bigger than the moon. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, that, that DJ must have looked it up and said, um, 400 times, that can't be right. It's probably, they probably, probably it's printing error. Four times. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can be 400 times bigger <laughs> than the moon. Um... Carl went, yeah, but the sun, it's only got a million years, isn't it? I went, what? He went, on that space program, it said that in a million years, the sun will be destroyed. And he said, and then we're all shafted. <laughs> right? I went, I laughed. Steve went, no, it's okay. By then, we'll be on another planet. <laughs> no, I think that's yeah. true. We'll have colonised right. other planets. Carl went, yeah, but there'll be no sun. Steve went, well, there's other suns, which is true. Carl went, well, I went, well, yeah, ev every star is a sun. Carl went, oh, well, not not really. Not really. Don't, don't believe that, <laughs> do you? And I went, no, it is. The sun is just a star. It's not even a particularly big star. Carl went, well, why didn't they say that instead of worrying me? <laughs> instead of worrying me. In a million years' time. Yeah. I love yeah. that Carl, he's been preserved, brought back <laughs> to life, and is now the ruler of the world. Just a head in yeah. a fish tank. <laughs> and he speaks like this. I am Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> the reason, the reason you became king of the universe, of course, is because of your fascinating French bread anecdote. Oh yeah, yeah. What come on the then. What? How? Uh, how did baguettes come about? If this is going to be someone cooked a loaf a bit wrong and said oh, I can still make a sandwich out of it, I'm going to hit you. No, 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 no. Go on then. Um, right, Napoleon, when he was at war and that with um, Russia. Uh -huh. 1812, yeah. Yeah, all his soldiers were like, you know, not used to the cold weather and that. And so they said, take, take some clothes in your bag with you because it's going to be, uh, gonna be nippy, nippy yeah. out there. So um, they put all the clothes in the bag. Sure. Still they were told. Thought, oh, it's Napoleon, for Christ's sake. No I'm room for any food. No You're food joking. Food. So, um, Couldn't they make some sort of like sandwich? <laughs> no, it wouldn't fit because I've got all the clothes. You have to take extra yeah. gear. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I can see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> is there a baguette-shaped gap <laughs> left in their holdall? They thought, let's make some bread that you can fit down your trouser leg. What? That's not true! <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> gone! I read it in Newston train station. I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read it? scrawled on the wall in graffiti? No, no, no. Yeah. Do you know the upper was it also <laughs> meet me here for Cockburn <laughs> at 12 o'clock? <laughs> the Upper Cross Sandwich <laughs> Shop, Houston <laughs> Station. It's on the wall. What do you mean it's on the wall? Do you know it says like <laughs> sail on at Dixon's or whatever? Yeah. Next to that there was like a bit of information. Once you've read the stuff on Dixon's baguette information. There was there's a big thing about <laughs> the history of the baguette. I read <laughs> it and I thought, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we got we gotta make a sandwich we can spit down our trouser leg. <sighs> How can you march and fight with a huge piece of bread down your uh, train? Although it would be intimidating, you see them coming, you go, Sacre bleu, look at the size <laughs> yeah. of them. They're, they're, they're big fellas. Well, I, I, I can't help but feel that could be a practical joke at your expense. Yeah. Do do that. Well, the Earl of do Sandwich. Do you question anything the, you read? If it's no, printed up, is that yeah. like fact for you then? Well, it's not funny. I mean, if they were trying to be funny, it's like, well, it's not, is it? So it's in Have you heard us? Things sometimes the, the, want to no, be that's, funny that's, when that's exactly what happened with the sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich wanted somebody he could fit down his pants. <laughs> and uh, it was a, those triangle cut sandwiches wrapped in cling film. It was perfect. Uh, um, you might be right. You might be right. 
Because the Cornish pasty, so they could drop it down the mines, isn't it? Is they, it? Yeah, they wrapped it up in a, they wrapped up like meat and vegetables in pastry, and they sort of crimped it, and it was like a little, and they dropped it down the mine. So, yeah, that's how that came about. And bagels were originally made so that people could play hoopla, <laughs> but then <laughs> eat afterwards. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> that is true. Con. Well, this anyway. Is con I bluff. Is yeah. Well, true. Yeah. They're well, all true. They're all true. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your well, kids that when you have them. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if they're still alive in a million years. <laughs> well, it might be true. Can someone confirm um, that baguette fact that it was so Napoleon could stick it down Not his trousers? Not him, his, his soldiers. Men. His men. Yeah. Fascinating information. Fascinating bread information, Carl. Radio Ed. Yeah, now this is my song for the lovers. It's a beautiful track. It's let down uh, off OK Computer. It's one of my favourite radio hits tracks. It's lovely. Right, set the tape going now if you want to tape mm. you know, these songs. Avalanches, frontier psychiatrist. Absolutely. Well, we've had lots of emails. Um, people, obviously, we inflamed uh, and provoked well, about actually, the, the, the Cornish we're... pasty. Um, I've got a couple of amendments to that. The, the crusty bit, you know, is actually as a handle, because obviously the mines had dirty hands, and they'd eat the, all the stuff in the pasty, and they'd be left with this sort of crust, and they could throw that away. Mm -hmm. Also, someone told us that at one end was a, like apple, mm -hmm. so you have a little sweet as well. A little dessert. So, there you go. You noticed how, like, over the years we've been doing this, you know, way mm. back when we started XFM, no one ever contributes when we ask about the music, no. when we ask about hip-hop, no. or their, you know, opinions on that, anything no. important. No. But, start talking about pasties, yeah. we've had about five phone calls. Yeah. And like someone someone phoned up to confirm that they used to work for Upper Crust, and uh, basically, Carl got all excited. So, uh, so it is true. She went, well, I don't know if it's true. I've, I've read the same sign you yeah. did, Carl. Interestingly, it there's an email here that says, uh, which basically offers a history of the baguette, yeah. and uh, talks about after the revolution, the government decreed that all of France must eat the same bread, and it was up to the bakers to bake this bread of equality, mm. um, and then Napoleon kind of um, made sure it was a particular, he kind of set in. in yeah, the, in obviously the on the bread, you can eat anything you find in the garden, mm. frogs, snails, bits of horse, but squid. But the, <laughs> the interesting thing is, Rick, that there's no mention of sticking it down your trousers whilst going to war. The French have tried to keep that secret for <laughs> over a hundred years, it was Steve. Upper crust, people. Yeah, yeah, ne nearly nearly two hundred years, that is a top secret. Somehow Houston Station Upper Crust got hold of a document <laughs> left behind in an old sea chest, possibly Napoleon's, could have been Josephine's. Unfortunately, jotted it down. He's kicking himself now. Oh, Sarah, I cannot believe I left a note. If he talked like that. He did. He did, he did that, yeah, yeah, he talked English, exactly. but in a very funny <laughs> French exactly. accent. Do you remember, it's there was one thing that, talking about funny French accents, you remember, you remember Allo Allo? Yeah. Remember, it was on about five o'clock in the afternoon, but they still met, because it was a funny Frenchman, it was that, that English guy who was posing as a French police yeah. officer. Yeah, it's very complicated He would often walk by, and he, I remember there was one where he said, uh, I was pissing by the door when I heard the shit. Oh, oh yeah, now, that, passing by the door, that. I'm allowed passing to say that. by the door when I heard a shot. That's what he's saying. I'm allowed yeah. to say that at two o'clock because that I'm just saying, I'm talking in a French accent. Yeah. I was pissing by the door when I heard a shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Because I'm speaking French, Carl. Do, do, you, do, you, know, do you know what I mean? That's the rule. Do you know why people tink all the, tink the glasses before they have a drink? Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that, Carl. Is it about poison? It is. Here we are. What, would it make a different noise? Nope. Brilliant. Go on, explain Why? it. Why? You explain it, Steve. No, 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 don't Steve, you explain it, Carl. <laughs> Go on, oh, I've started so I'll finish. Come on, Carl, explain why they tink the glasses. Ages ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> That's not one of my film reviews. <laughs> Years ago. Welcome to History Now. Now, ages ago, only people with money had drinking or something. Keep going, Carl. Keep I, going. I like spirit and stuff, so yeah. they'd, um, it's, it's like businessmen, business, businessmen. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> this is getting to be cruel, isn't it? This is amazing. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Why go did on. you open your mouth, Carl? <laughs> what were you hoping was the best that could happen? Because you're trying to make me look stupid before with the planet, so I'm... Where is you now? 
<laughs> yeah, go on, no, come on. Biz, bi bi businessmen. <laughs> businessmen. No, businessmen with money. I've got drink and ching. Okay, so then... So they'd, so, they'd, so they'd nip round to have a chat about the whatever they're earning money with. <laughs> and they'd say, right, do you want a drink then? And yeah. they'd go, oh, yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah. So yeah. rather than, like, um, just pouring it out of a bottle into a glass and saying, there you go, it, it could be going, hang on a minute, could be poisoning me here than trying to, like, nick me business idea. Yeah. yeah. So what they'd do... It, it sort of pour a bit of his drink into the other person's glass, and you get that tink noise, and that's slight like cheers, you know. No, no, no Carl, I, I just have a slight amendment there. I think what it was was you're actually right that they would then test each yeah. other's drinks to see that show that it wasn't poison. But over the years, that was reduced to just chinking the glasses by way of saying let's not actually bother going through the whole rigmarole. They mm. just did the yeah. chinking of the glasses. Yeah, well, I've, I've yeah. yeah, that's 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 good. Whew. It was exhausting, though, wasn't it? I know. Was it worth it? Do you think? Well, I, I like that because people will carry that with them now. When they do that, they think, "Oh, that bloke's definitely not trying to poison me." Yeah. So the, the horrible thing is that now, when I do the glasses, I can laugh and go, "They don't know I've poisoned them." <laughs> exactly. You should always do the pouring back and forth. It's a shortcut. It's a slippery slope. You know, just be careful. Ash, there's a star. One of my bands of 2001, Ash. Was it? Yeah, they've come through. I didn't like them at first. Thought, uh, you know, a bit, a bit too lo-fi. But yeah, I think they've, yeah. they've worked at it. They've got good songs. They're good performers. And I think they're probably thoroughly nice chaps. Sure. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't say hello because we were away for a couple of weeks. We didn't come back and go, oh, we're back, did we? It's like nothing ever happened. Exactly. You know what I mean? Did um, you have a good Christmas? Yeah, you? Yeah. Carl? Lovely. Okay, let's crack on. Did it, my um, I went on holiday after Christmas, yeah. Yeah. And um, so did uh, our mutual friend, Phil Belker. Yeah, good man. He he w he, he was in Lanzarote and he told me one of the funny. I don't know if I can tell this on the radio. I'll have to say the c word. I just go. It's in a sentence, so I just go you see when it comes, and you'll know that he's saying the sure. terrible word. Um, just you know, didn't want to ruin the anecdote. Anyway, uh, they're walking along one evening in Lanzarote, and there's lots of Brits there apparently, and Phil. Over here's uh, a sort of married couple arguing. They're having to go home a bit early. And she's saying to him, she went, for Christ's sake, every time we come out drinking, you always shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. Always. Not once. So he's going, ah, oh, I've told you, he said, it's not the drink, it's the weather. She went, the weather. You'll be blaming the food next, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they should have got married. Wow. Or may, when did you think the shooting itself started? It must have been after the marriage, because if it, if they, you know, you're caught in, and you go, they go, went out with uh, uh, Derek again, did you ask that? Yeah, how was it? It was, the evening was lovely, the meals must be shut himself again. That's, that's five dates, five different heaps of shit. But I think I can change him. I think I can change him, yeah. It must have happened after the marrying. Or you just might think, oh God, I've got, always got to that age where I think, look, I'll just empty it when I get home. Yeah. I'm not going to keep going up and going to the toilet, you know. It's the ice that does it. Yeah, Carl is right, I think. It is the ice. What do you mean? People forget, you know, they say, oh, don't, don't drink the water when you're on holiday, and they, and they don't, they drink, you know, they buy Evian and stuff. Oh, I see. They forget about the ice. The ice cubes, you're right, in a bar, made from tap water. And that can do it, can it? I assume that she wasn't drinking ice then. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, why is it just happening to you? Let's be honest, everyone that goes on holiday doesn't end up crapping themselves. Yeah, yeah, they usually make it to a it, toilet. He does it every time he drinks, doesn't he? Yeah, well, apparently. Just don't let him carry the baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's good, isn't he? Oh, Carl comes out with something. He does now and again, doesn't he? Carl, that was sweet, man. That yeah, sweet. nice one. Yeah, respect you. Right, we've got another feature now. Yes, this is a feature which we introduced before Christmas, and it was so popular, we brought it into 2002 <laughs> as well. Yeah. And it's we've carried it over with us. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. And I don't, th I don't think we'll ever run out of features for it. <laughs> I don't think so. Go on, then, what's the feature called, Steve? Brilliantly, it's rather brilliantly called A Song That I Like. Yeah. And in it, let me explain. Go on, go game. on. What I do is, in it, I play a song. What, that um, you like? Or? That I like. Oh, right, yeah. so you just pick a few, oh, well, hmm, let me go, I'm going to explain this. All the songs, right, there are, Carl. Steve likes some of them, he doesn't like others. Exactly. But for this particular feature, 
the only songs that will be in this section will be the ones that he likes. If you think you're going to hear songs that I don't like, you're wrong. <laughs> Let me clear that up straight away. Yeah. The songs that I like. What song have you chosen to play? Thank you very much for asking. I have chosen, and it's something I've only been introduced to recently, but I did enjoy it, and it seemed, um, you know, c just felt contemporary. It's uh, Pla Patti Smith and the classic... Oh, Blue fantastic. Play it. Gloria by Patti Smith. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I love it. I've, 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 hear that again. I've always been one of my favourite tracks. And as Carl pointed out, sounds remarkably like, uh, who did you mention? PJ, PJ Harvey. Harvey. Oh yeah, well, well yeah, everyone knew that. But she was obviously very influenced by her. That's fine, that's fine. That's alright, yeah. that's allowed. That's, that's cool. I like PJ Harvey too. Exactly. There's enough room for two. You're absolutely right. <sighs> oh. Here we let's, are, just, let's just take a moment to think about what we've done. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been good. It's, yeah, uh, we've enjoyed it's, it's now a 20 minutes. We've 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 talked about um, oh, shit in yourself. <laughs> we talked about pasties. We've done, done pasties. We've done pasties. And a number of pastries, actually. Um, we did never got the. Um, we should have done a competition. Who's the who's the um, tastiest cartoon ever? Well, actually, I threw up she Tara. I threw up um, Jessica Rabbit. I've had some people contribute here on, on. email. Um, we've got someone here. Dom has uh, emailed us. He's told us that so for him, Daphne from Scooby Doo. Yeah, popular, popular choice. Popular and choice. And obviously, this is one I've uh, I've never quite understood. Wilma from the Flintstones. <laughs> I've actually always felt that Wilma. I don't know. I just thought she was a bit. No, not a bit Wilma. Lonely. Betty, surely. Yeah, yeah, Betty. Well, this is what I'm thinking. Wilma. I mean, yeah, Betty, surely, but Wilma. Oh, yeah, just like homely. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, oh, yeah, come yeah. on, Steve! You wouldn't say no to Wilma. Yeah, I suppose not. If it was on, well, I'd be worried about Fred. If you found out. <laughs> I would, well, I'd hate to do it, you know. I don't want to do it to Fred. He's a good guy. He is, isn't yeah, he? He's, he's a bit of a jump. Whereas, where, whereas Barney, to be honest, I don't yeah. think he deserves Betty. Do they both work in the quarry? <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, let's be honest, Fred, not a smart man. I mean, he obviously uh, didn't come out of uh, of rock school with anything other than a couple of basic O-levels. I know, but he's a hard, he's, he, you know, he's a hard-working sound sort of but guy. they got a big house, they got, like, a TV, they got that bird thing. Yeah. They I mean, I, I, to be honest, if I was Fred, I would be a little bit disappointed that my kid does nothing, whereas Barnes can lift up, sort of, tall buildings. Sure. Bam, bam. He's yeah, a very yeah. strong... You know. I mean, interesting me, um, Fred loves his job. He's all yabba dabba doing at the end of the day. <laughs> he does yabba dabba. He spent the whole day lifting rocks from one place to another. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't take that from that cat, though. <laughs> I would. If a cat picked me up by the scruff neck and put me out, yeah. right, on the doorstep, oh, I'd right. go mental. I'd get rid of it. It is a saber-toothed tiger, though, Carl, so it could rip him to shreds. It's not like a normal domestic cat you have nowadays. You know when they go to the drive-in? at the beginning yeah and they order um, maybe some ribs yeah that huge, that huge rib and it yeah. tips the car over yeah was that her first day on the job <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, either can't... it's never been ordered before yeah or either it's that or, she'd have realised or, that, or yeah. yeah we're out of pig we, we've got brontosaurus rib exactly. and he goes won't that knock the car over <laughs> no it won't I don't know Rick can I tell you now that was an accident waiting to happen it was really wasn't it yeah, yeah and it did oh dear Mind you, I had a, I went in te to Texas once, and I had some ribs, and it was like the Flintstones. It was huge. And not only did it look too much like an animal that I couldn't actually eat it, I don't know who could eat it. I mean, seriously, it was two foot long, yeah. and all the rib it was like half a rib cage. And I it just... Incredible. My friends were lived in Texas for a while, and they uh, they once were in a, from a diner, and there was, um, you know those kind of benches that are attached to the table the yeah. itself, like a kind of picnic bench? Yeah. And uh, this huge fat guy came in, he came wobbling, and he ordered like this kind of everything you can eat meal, and his fat kind of sort of, you know, it kind his of... His big uh, fatty, itself. fatty fat, and it's fatted yeah, on it, the fat table, it yeah. Ratted, it wrapped itself around the uh, table and everything. Oh, he was God. chowing down, and when he tried to leave, the table came up with him. Oh, no. Imagine that. I mean, they are fat, aren't they? They're big people. They're huge people. But it was that thing we talked about before, that um, uh, bloke on Jerry Springer stone, it was like 80 stone, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I felt quite sorry for him. He was really sad and he was crying. It, it is rad, but my point is this, right? When he got to, say, 50 stones, sure. didn't he go, that's too much that's gonna be enough. For, a, for a land animal? <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's big, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I'm getting worried. I'm 13 stone and I'm genuinely getting worried. I'm thinking, oh, Yeah, God. when you've got that big, when you've actually got your own mare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, you have, when you have to get in helpers to to w look what the scale says. Yeah. Like, they, four or five people lift up your belly and go, it's 52 stone. You go, that's too much. Exactly. That's too, I'm going to only have nine breakfasts When you actually, today. when you begin to appear on the ordnance survey map, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. When you've you got can your see, own symbol. It's like, we can see two things from space now, Fatty and Steve Merchant. <laughs> we'll be landing right, that about. Well, well, no, I'm just saying, you're not fat, aren't you? You're freakish and big. Just it's, another quick on. thought. They, someone's mentioned Daphne from Scooby-Doo, yeah. but I've always had a soft spot for Velma. 
Velma. Because Velma oh, no. have glasses. I mean, I'd have... I'd have She's had my, clever. Can I tell you what would have happened if I was in that environment? I was maybe on the... Mission Your mission. glasses would have got tangled no, up. I'd have always had an... I'd always been making a play for Daphne, right? And I, Velma would have fancied me, but I'd yeah. always ignored it because I was playing for Daphne. And then when I finally realised it was never going to happen with Daphne, I'd have blown it with Velma. Maybe not, though. Maybe not. Maybe not. It, 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 sometimes those, you know, they, they might, you know, appreciate honesty and go, listen, I've been hitting on the good-looking one. <laughs> Oi, four eyes. Yeah. Do you fancy it, Chubbs? <laughs> exactly. Something like that. Just being honest is what you're saying. Well, yeah. I'm wondering, I don't mean to be libelous, but Velma, she was quite short, the glasses, the short hair. Lesbian. Hung around with the dog. And lesbian. The I'm beginning to wonder if she yeah. was. Maybe. I, I was like, see, unfortunately, I said lesbian there, and you still carried on with your assessment of what it is to be a lesbian. It's bad enough doing the cliches of having short hair. You said the dog. Yeah, well, she hangs around with a dog. So, do lesbians do that? Well, have you seen some uh, lesbians? They're right, dogs. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I've done there? You know what I've done there, Rick? Comedy oh, award God. winning. <laughs> professional. I was having a cup of tea. 100 reasons now. On XFM 104.9, just gone half two. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. Hi. All right. Rick, we've get, got a couple of emails in here, and they're saying they enjoyed your performance over the Christmas period on a programme called uh, 100 Greatest TV Moments. Yeah. Did you do an interview or something? What was the deal? I, I didn't see this. Uh, yeah, the w office was in there, wasn't it? And I was right. interviewed for it. But what are they talking about? That you're, they enjoyed your performance? <laughs> Go on, tell me you what know, do you? No, I don't. It's the thing that I did on Razzmatazz. Oh, was uh, this where they found a cliff or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all right, I was in a band, and we had one single out or something, and I did one TV appearance when I was about, oh, God, and they showed a bit of it, about seven seconds, me on Razzmatazz. <laughs> oh, God. Razzmatazz, for with, those that don't remember, was like a kind of, I suppose, what was it, like a kind kids. of CD UK of its time? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, uh, oh, God. And it was, yeah, it was the, of the time, sort of new romantic. And, and I they was, showed a clip of it? I it? looked about ten and about five stone. With hair and makeup and girly clothes. My sister actually said, I look like Posh Spice. <laughs> Brilliant. Which is, but there's a funny story about that, right? Because we were rushed and we had to do this thing and we, um, oh God, and we were meant to take a flight to Newcastle. And the, Where were you travelling from, London? Uh, yeah. But we, we got there and we didn't have tickets, we were told we were, but the A&R man overslept. Right, for the record company, overslept and it was terrible and we were fretting. And eventually, so it was too late to get the plane, we missed the plane, we had to get a train. And it was really kind of fine. They were back and forth going, yeah, if they come now, we can still do it. Uh, we're going to miss it. And this was like a big promotional thing. And we got there and they went, I, oh, <laughs> God, right? And I had this sort of like jumpsuit I was wearing that I'd cut off, put that on backwards. <laughs> a jumpsuit? Uh, yeah. Brilliant. I know. It was, Is it this was what was bad. on the clip? Yeah. Uh, I had that on back to front and there was no time. And I think I even mimed wrong at one point. And it was awful. But the funny story is this, that when <laughs> we were there, we didn't have our tickets. This was at the airport. We bumped into Buck's Fizz. <laughs> the, 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 the guys and girls from Buck's Fizz and their manager, so there's like five of them, right? And there's two of us, and they had five tickets. And, it's, and Buck's Fizz tried to smuggle us through. <laughs> and so, an so they went through the things, right? And they went, tickets, please. And he just waved five tickets that he had. Like that goes, this is us, right? And they went, well, can I have a look at them? And they went, there's only five here. And they went, they just looked at us and went, sorry, lads, we tried. We tried, we were tried, we were nearly oh. smuggled through. By Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Carol. They couldn't even, even with their powers. They were the height of their powers. Because that was like, was that really, that was they'd like already done, believe time. They'd already, yeah, they'd already done making your mind <laughs> up. I thought if anyone can get us through customs check, it was the fizz. But even the fizz what I like could though, not that get That reassures me, I have to say, about kind of airplane travel. You yeah. know, with these kind of troubled times, it's yeah. nice to know that what even someone like Bucks Fizz yeah. couldn't get, you know, smuggle someone through. That's good, because even, you know, the t top security man went, hold on. There's five in the fizz, <laughs> yeah. there's five tickets, those two lads are not going through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that makes you more secure about Definitely. air travel now. Well, it's lovely if I'm in America, you know, and I see five star, yeah. you know, yeah. trying to get through customs. With two yeah. other lads. Exactly, exactly. I think, wait a minute, what's going on there? Yeah. Wait a minute, security guy stopped him, it's fine. It's fine, yeah. You know there's only about five in five star. Oh. It's lovely, it's lovely to know that. Yeah. I love the fact, and did you, did you know the fizz previously? Was of this your first not. run in with the fizz? No, they were, they were doing, um, they were doing, uh, the Taz, same as us. They <laughs> were doing thing. the old Raz, same and as did us. They, did you recognise the Fizz and go, oh my God, that's the Fizz, let's try and sneak in with them, or did they recognise you? How did it work? 
I wouldn't have recognised that. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Would you, I love the, the audacity of going up to Buck's Fizz and saying, trying to smuggle us in. Can <laughs> you try and break aviation law for us? Now, y- <laughs> yeah. Now it's time to make your mind up. We're going to the land of make-believe. I did that and they laughed. They went yeah. brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you through, lads. Yeah. Just stay tight. Um, I, I was actually uh, on top of Bobby's shoulders in a long coat. Lovely. Yeah, but Bill... Well, seriously, though, I don't understand how what their plan was. To th- th- like, they would have gone, yep, yeah, through. <laughs> it's the fears, let them through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, don't bother checking the... It's like, it's not worth even answering. We couldn't even get to Newcastle. Do you yeah, think he was wearing your Newcastle? jumpsuit backwards that sort of gave it away? Well, no, but see, I didn't have it on then. I was oh. I was just in civics. I just had jeans and a T-shirt then. <laughs> I didn't even have my hair gelled. I was wow. just like, cash. I then. saw it. I thought it looked all right. Did you? Did you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, for the... I <laughs> <don't know. laughs> yeah. tight jumpsuit. Nice yeah. Cheekbones. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. yeah I had nice. some cheekbones, yeah. yeah. That was the... That was if the anyone difference. else saw it, or maybe they taped no, it and they got a clip, because I'd love to see it. I missed it. Well, let's, I'll get you one. It's if like you have it, put it... I'll tell you what, why not create a website... Um, and put that clip on there on a constant loop, and then send the address in, and I'll give it out, and people can check it out for themselves. Yeah, right? brilliant. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. I have to lose weight now. Yeah, that film. Oh, now we come to the feature. We've, we're carrying this over 2002 because it was such a great success. Everyone's talking about it. I, do you remember I stopped my film reviews because I'm only doing films I like and I've done all the films I like. That's where other film reviewers fail. Sure. Because they review for substandard films. <laughs> exactly. My average is still nine and a half out of ten. Yeah. yeah. And no one's beaten that. Not Barry Norman, not Jonathan Ross. No one's got an average of nine and a half out of ten That's for the true. films they reviewed. So I'm keeping it there. I don't want to drop my standards. Mm. However, that film sounds good. This is where I pick a classic track from a film that I might not have seen, right? But I like the song. I might go and see the film. This is um, almost famous. The film was almost famous. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, right? But a song. Now, don't panic. Listen without prejudice. This is Elton John, but it's when he was good, okay? When he was a bright, funky, young, Brit glam star. Wonderful song. Wonderful tune. Wonderful lyrics. It's Tiny Dancer. Love Burns, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club there, Steve. What's about it? That's it, isn't it? We've had some laughs, haven't we? We've learned as well. We've been educated as ever. Yeah, pasties, all that. that. We've got baguette information. We've had features such as, that film sounds good. Exactly. Song song that I like. Song for the lovers. Song for the ladies. Song for the ladies coming up very shortly. Rick, I was lucky enough this week to go to a exclusive press preview of Britney Spears' forthcoming movie, Criss Cross, or Crossroads. Crossroads, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's not related to the popular TV show. Right. Rick, I sh- I'm assuming you'd, you'd love me to do a little review of it now. I can't because it's no, embargoed until March. I can only talk about it no. in March. No, Otherwise, I no. the press people will go crazy. No, I don't. I, I wouldn't want you to. Well, know. no. I imagine you want to know all about Crossroads. Not really. Because I cannot tell you anything. Well, don't then. I mean, just <laughs> well, fine, you can on. ask me questions. You can pump me for information. I cannot tell you anything about it until March. I would pump you for no reason ever. No, but really? certainly not for information. Carl. It doesn't matter what you ask me about Britney Spears' Crossroads, <laughs> I cannot tell you anything about it. Right. Okay? Okay. But seriously, if you want to know the plot or what I think of it, I cannot discuss it. <laughs> okay? And if the listeners want to email in questions, they can. I cannot reply okay. until March. So hang on for that. I've seen the film already. <laughs> I've already seen the film myself in advance of everyone else. Yeah. I can't tell anyone about it right. until March. That's the kind of excuse. I'll tell you what, though. Gone. Maybe I'll review it in March. No, you can't. Why? Because you haven't seen it, and I have. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to ask me, qu- ask me a question now about it. Well, right. actually in March. Yeah, Not but if you wanted to know now, you couldn't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> right. Song for the lovers. Yeah. <laughs> ladies, anyway, sorry. Song for the ladies this week. Um, I was lucky enough to um, get given as a Christmas gift uh, the uh, Rolling Stones complete singles collection. Good and present. I, good well, present. It's an absolute joy. And I was, f- I've forgotten how brilliant Wild Horses Oh, great is, track. Uh, from the Stones. So I thought I'd play that this week for the ladies. Let's leave them with that. Jagger and Richards at their best. Beautiful. Watts is in on it. <laughs> well, if I know Watts, I mean, Wyman was still there those <laughs> days. See you next time. Bye.